Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 2, Linear and Nonlinear Expressions in X. Okay, so classwork exercise. Write each of the following statements in exercises 1 through 12 as a mathematical expression. So right there, no equal signs, just expressions. State whether or not the expression is linear or nonlinear. Okay, so they want us to tell whether it's linear or nonlinear. If it is nonlinear, say why. Okay, number one, the sum of a number. Sum means plus of a number. If I don't know that value, I'm going to call it x. And so wherever you see the word and, that's where the plus sign goes. Four times the same number for x. So the sum of x and four times that number x. There it is, x plus 4x. Now, it doesn't say to simplify or set this equal to anything. That is our expression. I could simplify this because 1x plus 4x is 5x. Okay, but it doesn't say to do that, but I'm just doing this to explain something to you now. How do I know it's linear? Well, the exponent for x is 1, x to the first power. 5 times x to the 1. So whenever our exponent is 1, it is a linear expression, so long as there are no fractions, that is. So I'll explain that later. So in other words, I do not need this 5x to the 1, or I don't need the 1s, but I'm just going to leave them there for now. But the answer is x plus 4x. Another way I can show you that is I can get my calculator, and I can go to y equals, and I can put x plus 4x into the calculator and graph it. And there it is, a straight line going up through the origin and up to infinity, both directions. That is a straight line, and it is linear because x is to the power of 1. Okay, number 2. The product of, all right, well, product is to multiply. 5, there's the number 5, and that's where the multiplication symbol is going, a number. So when I don't know what the number is, I'm going to say x. So this is the product of 5 and a number, 5x. I do not need that dot, but I was just explaining to you that it is 5 times x, or simply 5x. Now again, my exponent is 1. If I graph 5x in my calculator, it's actually this equation because it's x plus 4x is 5x, but if I put 5x in here and graph it, then that line will just come right back. So power of 1, it is linear. So number 1 was linear. I didn't write it, but it is. Number 2 is also linear. Number 3, multiply 6, multiply and, so that's where the multiplication symbol goes, the reciprocal of. And then it says the quotient of a number and quotients divide. The word and tells you where to put it. So it's x divided by 7. x and the quotient, it's the reciprocal of. Now remember x and 7, that'd be the divide, div, division. Can't talk today. x over 7 is the same as x divided by 7. That's quotient. But it says the reciprocal of that. So the reciprocal means to take the numerator and make it the denominator, and take the denominator and make it the numerator. So this is the reciprocal of the quotient of a number and 7. So then we're going to take 6 and multiply 6 times 7 over x. OK, now we have a problem. If you remember, if I can, I can separate this, by the way, that is equal to 6 times 7 over 1 times 1 over x. That means the same thing. And if I focus on this 1 over x, if you remember back to module 1, then 1 over x is equivalent to, well, let me not write it there, Over here, I'll write it. 1 over x equals x to the negative 1. Okay, because if we want to take it from the denominator and move it up, this, the 
one that was here changes sign. If you don't remember that, go back and review because these are always going to be used in Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. You have to remember your power rules. So, my x is to the power of negative 1. That's a negative 1 being in the denominator. So, therefore, it is non-linear. Our exponent has to be positive 1. And I will show you in the calculator that it is true, truly not linear. 6 times 7 over x. So, I get my calculator. Go to y equals. Clear. 6 times the quantity 7 divided by x. Close the parentheses and hit graph. And that is definitely not a straight line. And it continues over here. Not a straight line. It did a jump. Not something we're going to do quite yet this year. But eventually you will be doing problems like this in algebra. Okay, so it's definitely not a straight line. Nonlinear. Number four, twice a number. Twice a number. 2x. Subtracted from. Okay, minus the word from means to read it this way. And then this says 4 times a number. So twice a number subtracted from this is 4x minus 2x added to 15 plus 15. Okay, I can combine these like terms and get 2x plus 15. My exponent's 1, my exponent's 1. It is linear, okay? But if you need proof, if you want to see that it is linear, then I'm going to go to yx, y equals, and hit clear, and put 4x minus 2x. So 4x minus 2x plus 15. Oops. And hit graph. And there it is, a straight line going up to infinity this way, down to negative infinity this way. That is linear. All right, number five, the square of the sum. So if we have a number, squared means the power of two. The square of the sum of six and a number. So plus goes in between where it says and, six, and a number. Six plus x, that quantity squared. Okay, the square of the whole sum. So there's my exp expression, 6 plus x, quantity squared. So if I distribute this, I get 36. Actually, there's a thing that goes on that's called, um, we have to, it means 6 plus x times itself, and we're going to get a 3 term. I'm not going to explain that now. Just keep in mind that if I distribute this to this 2, the power 2x, I get x squared, and that is definitely not x to the 1, so that is non-linear. And I will show you in the calculator what that would look like. It is called a parabola, but if I do parentheses 6 plus x, close parentheses, and I square it, and I graph it, then it is a parabola. That is definitely not a straight line. Okay, non-linear. Number six, the cube. That would be some number cubed. Okay, let me not use x yet. I'll use a box like I did up here. Something to the power of three. Something cubed. The cube of a positive number, some x, divided by the square of that same positive number. So it's x divided by the square of that, and we're going to take the cube of the whole thing. Okay? Let's do our rules. So, distribute x to the 1. That's a 1 there. Remember, power rule. If you don't remember these, go back to module 1. Lessons, I don't remember exactly, but they're in there. 3, 4, 5. That whole module is based on power rules. And x to the 1 times 3, that's multiplication, is x to the 3. x to the 2 times 3 is x to the 6. So this is going to be x to the 3 divided by x to the 6. And that means to subtract our exponents, and that is going to give us x to the negative 3. So 
keep in mind what we started with. The cube of a positive number divided by the square of that same positive. So the answer to this is x over x squared cubed. That is our expression. And this is not 1, so it is nonlinear. Okay, and I will graph this for you. x over x squared cubed. So I get my calculator. Go to y equals. It's clear. x divided by x squared quantity cubed. x divided by x squared to the third power. Graph it. And there's this really strange function going on here. Okay? And there it is. Definitely not a straight line. Number seven, the sum of four consecutive numbers. All right, well, I don't know where we're going to start, but if it was zero, the next number is one, the next number is two, the next number is three. Or it could be negative five, comma, negative four, comma, negative three, comma, negative two. The sum of four consecutive numbers. These are consecutive numbers. We can be anywhere in the number line. Consecutive just means one after the other. Let's just start with the zero and the one and the two, okay? And actually, let's start with one to make this explanation better. And so there's our first four consecutive numbers starting at one. If I don't know the first one, it is x. Well, the next number in terms of x is x, which is one. So in this case, x equals one, our first term. And this is to get two, I have to take x plus one. To get a three, I have to take one plus two. And to get a four, I take the first term one plus three. So the sum of four consecutive numbers is x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 3. I'm emphasizing those other pluses to explain to you that we're adding these terms that have pluses in them. So if I just ignore the parentheses because it's all addition, it'd be x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 3. That is the sum of the first of four consecutive numbers. Okay. Now this says four subtracted from, meaning go this way when reading, the reciprocal of a number. Well, if I have a number x, its reciprocal is one over x. So it's going to be one over x. That's the reciprocal of my number subtracted from that, so minus 4. Oh, by the way, up here, if I add all these up, I get x plus x plus x plus x, which is 4x. 1, 2, and 3 is 6, so it's 4x plus 6. x is to the first power. This is linear. I'm not going to show that on the calculator anymore. I think you get the idea. 1 over x is x to the negative 1. And that is not a 1, so therefore this is non-linear. Our exponent must be 1. Number 9, half of the product. So half, product is multiply of a number, multiplied by itself three times. Half of the product of a number multiplied by itself three times. So it's x times x times x times a half. A product of a number multiplied by itself three times is x cubed. So I could have one half x cubed, or I could write it as x cubed divided by two. Obviously, my exponent's three and not one. So this is, let me try that again. It is non linear. Number 10, the sum that shows how many pages Maria read if she read 45 pages of a book yesterday, and we're doing sum, that's addition, and, so there's a long stretch of words there before we got to the word and, that's where our plus sign goes, so 45 plus two-thirds of the remaining pages today. Well, we don't know how many there are, so two-thirds of the remaining pages. Okay, so again, I used a P here for pages, 
but really if you don't know and you want to graph this in your calculator or whatever we use x and y axes we could also have said it's 45 plus two-thirds x and regardless of what it is our exponent is one this is a linear expression okay number 11 an admission fee of ten dollars plus an additional two dollars per game an admission fee of ten dollars plus an additional two dollars per game two dollars per game let each game equal x so therefore ten dollars plus an additional two dollars per game and per is x oh what's going on here 10 plus two games two dollars per game and game is x 10 plus 2x this is a power of one this is linear five more than meaning we're going to read it this way four times a number and then twice that sum So twice, meaning two times, and it says and then, so I'm going to do this, okay? So this is just my rough draft, if you will. Five more than four times a number, 4x plus five. More than tells us to read it right to left, like Arabic, okay? 4x plus five. and then twice that sum. So then we're going to add that and multiply it by two. I could put the two here, but I prefer to have a two out in front. It just makes more sense to me. It's more closer to getting it into standard form. So anyway, there's our expression. So if I did distribute this, I'd get eight X plus 10. X is to the first power, it's not going to change. That is a linear expression. Okay. So there's linear expressions and nonlinear expressions. So review this lesson summary, especially about exponents, powers, and linear, and go do your problem set.